why do you think there are so many talented Asian kids? I mean, playing, they're like, I, I forgot how many millions people. You know, there, there was a joke uh, that I don't know what why it meant. They said Chengdu, it could be any city. That right. You see a child in Chengdu not holding a violin, it means it's a pianist. It's a pianist. <laughs> yes. Right, right. right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's um, when you know, it's you no. Know, that's a good question because there was almost, there were almost no Asians in classical music originally. Right. And I mean, only a couple of generations ago, uh, when my father was concertmaster uh, of the Harbin Orchestra, which was made up almost entirely of Russians. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And there was one Chinese person there. Right, right. Um, he lived on the Bund for a while in Shanghai. Uh, and the social life was, you know, the, he was in the Russian zone of the boom. The, the next block was the French or the German or whatever it was. Right, right. They would parties, you know, for each other and so forth. But um, music, the music was not. Now, uh, a lot of people know more than I do about this. In the 30s, I believe, there was an orchestra in Shanghai. Uh, but again, it was conducted by, I forgot his name, by an Italian person. Right. And probably it was mostly Europeans in the orchestra. Right. Um, now, um, at some point, maybe the Russians had something to do with it because after the war, the Russians sent not only, um, you know, scientists and uh, bridge builders and God knows what um, uh, to China because it, they, they were allies, of yeah. course, um, but brought everything, uh, doctors and musicians, and and help start conservatories. Now, that doesn't mean there was none. I, th I think you long told me, I, I should have asked him more questions, you know, you know the conductor in, in China, because um, he comes from a very musical family, and it probably precedes uh, all of this, but they were in the small, very small minority. Right. Uh, and if, um, in 1981, I said I went for the first time to China it, for things that had nothing to do with music. But when I got to Beijing, I got a phone call from, yeah, in fact, this might show what I mean, uh, a phone call uh, from the uh, Beijing Conservatory. They said they heard I was there, but I want to visit the conservatory. So well, obviously. So uh, the next day, the head of the conservatory um, picked me up and the, you know, nobody has cars, but the conservatory owned a car. And as the head of the conservatory, you could use it for business. Right. Not for pleasure, only for business. Yeah, okay. So he picked me up and he is, uh, English was like my Chinese. So we were not, I mean, you know, it's very elementary. And then suddenly I realized he was, uh, this is 1981, uh, he was older than I was. Um, by a number of years, and I asked him, um, where did you study? Because um, he was a musician. And he said, oh, in Moscow. And I said, you speak Russian? He said, of course. So I speak Russian. So from then I was speaking no problem after that. Okay. So, um, so he showed, but um, that was the beginning of things. Um, and at, at Curtis, one, uh, maybe the first Asian at Curtis, was not Chinese, uh, was Japanese. Okay. Uh, Toshio Eito, yes. I'm so <laughs> I mean, my God, this has never happened before. Right. And, and this is, um, well, it was after the uh, Second right. War. And I was not involved directly with Curtis at that time, but but I knew all about this. And uh, the his teacher, I guess, I think, was Zimbalist, and they arranged the Curtis arranged for him to have a Carnegie Hall recital. Oh, and this was something really special. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, then uh, when I started to teach in Curtis in 81, I became uh, head of Curtis in 86, but in 81, I was going there all the time and there were a few already. Um, the, and then wait, Lee Jen, who became oh, late. Right, yeah. yeah uh, the head of the conservatory, the piano yeah. department in yeah. in Shanghai, 
um, and there, there were there were three three or so people uh, like that, and, and every year more and more and more. Uh, yeah, and and what it is is um, the famous uh, uh, you know dragon mother myth that that if if you have a kid who's talented. A little bit, except a little more than other people. Right, right. Whether playing the violin or playing tennis, uh, it's, it's got to be you know fantastic. And they sit with them, they make them work. So that uh, two good things happen uh, if they are really talented. Right. Then they send to a neighboring bigger city. The um, and well, they're they had conductors of local orchestras. Right. We'd love to have a local person um, right. play. Um, and there was this uh, tr tremendous uh, tension, actually. Right. You know, my, my my daughter got this and my son got that. Uh, but, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. But not, not only in music, but uh, in sports and everything. Yeah. Um, and and then they would be sent maybe to the Shanghai or Beijing conservatories. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it just built on it so that it became an, a kind of a normal thing. I mean, just like um, in, in public school, uh, it, you, you learned about music. So yeah, right. if everybody exhibited something a little extra, well, that was noticed right away. Right, yeah, yeah. I mean, for a, to play um, a stringed instrument or a piano uh, very well, you can't suddenly discover at the age of 16 uh, that you love music and, and you're talented, but right. but you haven't practiced since you're four right. years. Um, right, right, yeah. So so, so it's, it became like I, I I see that it's almost like over over time became some kind of a ex explosion of I yeah. you would say talents, but I guess it's a it's a combination of of parent parents pushing for it or yeah, yeah. you know yeah. and uh, discipline. And because you, you see so many over the years, so many talented young pianists, can you can you spot them? I mean, like if someone were to play for you for uh, 10 minutes or five minutes, I think even 30 seconds, you say, oh, this one is yeah. tal it's extremely yeah. talented. No. And yeah. what was a, um, a 10 year old? No, it's, it's also, I mean, you see some, there's some something right. there. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so uh, anyway, this this became uh, all not only in in China but in uh, yeah, yeah. Korea and over, yeah, yeah. Many, many Asian uh, countries. It's uh, just, you know completely yeah. disproportionate. Um, like the orchestras. Uh, first of all, when I was growing up, there were no women in the orchestra to start with. Right. Okay. Uh, there was one with the Philadelphia Orchestra. There was a cellist. That was the <laughs> question. Uh, oh, the harpists, of course. Um, and, and okay, but uh, but then there were starting yeah. more Asian. More, more. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit like when I studied at Curtis, which is way before the time we're talking about. Um, the most of the pianists, violinists, were second generation Eastern European Jews, because they got out um, the Russian Revolution, then Hitler, um, and similar. There's a joke to the Jewish mother, also pushing pushing the child. And uh, it, it was pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Uh, but then the next generation or two generations later, they show that it's not so easy to make a livelihood um, especially as a pianist, because at least on every, every mother expects their child who plays the violin um, at Curtis Julia uh, to uh, to play in front of the Philadelphia Orchestra, but they may end up playing in the Philadelphia Orchestra. Yeah. It's so terrible, you know. <laughs> yeah. The pianist doesn't have that luxury. Right. Yeah. So what what would you say? Let, let's say thirty seconds. You you hear a young pianist. What what do you recognize right away that this this is the one? Instinctive uh, talent, phrasing, uh, a, a, a just a normal four-bar phrase that would be, let's say, how would a singer do it? Uh, 
So is she just playing notes absolutely correctly? Uh, and if it's not correct, yeah, obviously anybody can hear it. Um, but what is she doing with it? Uh, it instinctively, uh, does she breathe before when a new phrase starts? Yeah. Uh, when, when, I mean, with, without knowing what he's doing, I mean, he's just feeling it. Uh, and do you think it's, is, is this something that if you tell the child to do something and right away they, they absorb it, it's, it's so extremely important to have someone who instinctively uh, change right away versus someone who has to spend a lot of time. Do you, do you think sure. the ones that spend a lot of time, is it there's no uh, hope? <laughs> yeah, but, but listen, uh, it can also, uh, a very talented kid he may be so talented, but so inexperienced uh, that he he might feel that he doesn't feel what the, the teacher is saying. He feels it differently, and it might it might end up being that he's not he, he's not wrong or right. But, I mean, he's right as well. You know? Right, right. He has he has a, a yeah, thought. thought have, of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think um, the 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 career for young pianists. It gets harder and harder because there are so many, many. And so little, so few spots. So, what would you, what would you give an advice to someone just starting out? They are very talented. No, they know they're very talented. They may be like a teenager, and they want to become a performing artist. What would they do? In the case of a pianist, uh, which is different actually than than a string player. Yeah. I mean, yeah. well, a huge number of orchestras, yeah. and they. Will have a lot of violinists, um, so um, so it would be different with the pianist. Uh, probably, if you know they show big big talent and they uh, go to competitions and they get a third prize here or a second prize there or even a first prize in the in a you know some the, but but no manager, no concerts or very few. Uh, in graduation, I mean, I'm thinking of course, and because I know more about Curtis, where there are. The average age, of course, is younger at Curtis. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, to, yes, go and get a master's degree and go and maybe get a DMA. Yeah. Um, because uh, if you end up uh, with a uh, teaching position in university, right. which can be wonderful. I mean, some there are great music departments uh, right. in many, many places. Uh, you'll It's easier. No matter how you play, it's, you may play marvelously, but somebody who may be playing also well, but not as well, but has a DMA, mm, uh, yeah, yeah. Nope. job, and, yeah. it's, and, and it's a higher salary than a, than a job that's uh, not a right. DMA. And and then it could be that you have you're a late uh, late um, comer as career is concerned, and that maybe later when you're thirty already, and yeah. so but you start having some concerts that yeah. you. Do before that can happen too yeah yeah it is really true um so the the word is not to give up too soon <laughs> yeah <laughs> to well, not to give up. didn't want to do it i mean yeah right, right yeah 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 those, those, those are all fantastic because i i know over pypa we have so many uh talented young pianists and they all want to i mean i guess the the idea is always to become a star but yep. the star, the, the spots, is there are so few and there are so many people competing for it. And I think to have a, a, a good mindset is very important for life, to enjoy life. Yeah. Okay. So these are all wonderful. Uh, oh, yeah, it was a little bit spoiled because at Curtis, you have so few students. Right. That, uh, in other words, uh, there are other conservatories that may have as many good students, but they also have many other students too. Yeah, right. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so that it's, um, I, I was lucky, I mean, the, the not I and my colleagues at, at Curtis, that all students who were accepted there were in a very high level right away. Right. Yeah, yeah. It, it's the, the most, I, I believe it is the most difficult conservatory to get into. The percentage is something like 1.5 or 2%. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, it's five maybe for the entire thing, including right, right, right. No, but for piano, well, it depends. Uh, it depends how many graduate. Uh, and in the last 
years, uh, 10 years or something, um, there have been around 120, 125 applicants. Uh, and only two, spot. only two or three graduates. Well, uh, last year we took one, one year ago. Uh, but it, um, it was nobody graduated. Um, so, um, so I was yeah, if, we stupid, if we hadn't taken a good person. Right. You know, actually, I am very, as, talk, talking about the audition at Curtis, I noticed that um, you must play true Chopin. Isn't it? I mean, why, why <laughs> Chopin? Well, but that's only one of one of the things. Two contrasting. Words. Right, contrasting Chopin. But why not? Why why Chopin? Like. Well, wait. It's it's uh, Bach. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It used to be a oh, prelude fugue, and and then when I came in, I said, "Why prelude fugue? If they want to play a few right. from the partita, well, who cares?" So right. Bach, uh, a Beethoven and Mozart sonata. Yeah. Uh, two contrasting works of Chopin, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, and now and know, another just... work, anything they want of their choice of, right, of right. a piece that's over twelve minutes or something of their yeah. choice. Yeah. Uh, the why Chopin? Uh, well, if if you maybe they would pick some obscure work of Liszt, um, you know, or or something, and we'd be more interested how they play. Uh, you know, it, 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 it seemed to, it's one of these things where I, I didn't make this decision. Well, this, I, thought, I, I was thinking maybe you decided the uh, you know, decision uh, for the uh, auditions. When Joseph Huffman became the head of Curtis. And right. if it was good enough for him, and Sterkin was, uh, speaking right. of planets, uh, was also, uh, when, why change it? <laughs> you know, yeah, right, I, right. I think the only thing we added was another work of your choice. Yeah, yeah, because you hear so much about so many things in, in Chopin, I really believe. Yeah, well, yeah. 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 Okay, well, um, these are my questions, and I know that the audience has many more questions. So in the meantime, please leave your questions in the, the chat box, and I will be reading to, to Gary. And I, am, I hope I cover some things that, you know, you otherwise would never find out. Like for example, are, are you a good cook? I mean, this is I am deviating a bit. Are you a good cook? No, like, uh, but when when I first was married and uh, we moved to this, uh, well, we were in different apartments first. But when we finally got to this apartment, which is I don't know almost sixty years ago, um, uh, there are five. This is one of the oldest extant apartment houses in New York. So there are fireplaces everywhere and working. So I experimented in the fireplace, in the kitchen, in, in the uh, dining room, okay. and, and uh, did make some very interesting things, including getting a, a spit that turns. And I remember there were two ducks on at once. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, and I uh, that, but my wife was a very good cook. And uh, eventually I sort of, you know, just didn't do it anymore. Okay. I see. Yeah, but that, that that that's 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 wonderful because I know like even now there are different cuisines every night. I feel <laughs> at your house <laughs> different cuisines. Well, I know I'm I'm overdoing it now, uh, but of course now it's the uh, restaurants are delivering yeah. stuff. Yeah. So uh, yeah, the, I think the last three nights in a row I had also <laughs> <laughs> of sort of overdoing things. <laughs> Please be careful. Oh no, I know you. You got the vaccine. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, uh, oh yeah, I did get my. Uh, right. uh, uh, the yeah, the second dose was almost four weeks ago. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's it's, it's good. But still, please still be careful. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm not having uh, you know, many people, but but yeah, and they're more or less. Usually, most of the same people. I mean, and the many live right in this area. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I am now going to um, uh, lead the, the the leave the the rest of the time to the audience members, and uh, thank you so much. And I will be reading out the questions now. Okay. <laughs> 